Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazic University. In this video, we will be covering the third part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on the terahertz signaling system proposed for the nano electromagnetic communication approach of the nano networking research. We will answer the questions like what is the importance of the terahertz frequency band and what are the graphene antennas. Terahertz waves fall between the microwaves and the infrared light waves. They have a wavelength between 100 micrometers to 1 millimeter and frequencies between 0.3 to 3 terahertz. This region, called the terahertz gap, represents an area in the electromagnetic spectrum where the frequency of electromagnetic radiation becomes too high to be measured digitally via electronic counters. Therefore, the frequency must be measured by proxy using the properties of wavelength and energy. Similarly, the generation and modulation of coherent electromagnetic signals in this frequency range becomes much harder by the conventional electromagnetic devices used to generate radio waves and microwaves. Electromagnetic waves with lower frequencies than the terahertz are governed by the electronics research, whereas the higher frequencies are governed by the optics research. Therefore, the terahertz band can be called a meeting point of electronics and optics. It shares the properties of both infrared and microwave radiation. It practically works as if it's a filter region between these two domains. Although it sounds like a new research topic, it had been investigated many times in the last century. In 1897, Rubens et al. writes, Since we have become accustomed to think of waves of electrical energy and light waves as forming component parts of a common spectrum, the attempt has often been made to extend our knowledge over the wide region which separated the two phenomena and bring them closer together on the terahertz band. But up until now, it had been unsuccessfully tried to generate coherent waves in the terahertz band by electronic circuitry. Terahertz band has one huge advantage over other microwave electromagnetic waves. A bandwidth of a length between 10 GHz to several terahertz that is unused by any other technologies. As a comparison, current Wi-Fi systems utilize a bandwidth of only 10 or 20 MHz. Consequently, the terahertz band and terahertz signaling offers extremely high data rates. But these benefits do not come without its drawbacks and limitations. Being physically very small, Terahertz waves are greatly affected by metal obstacles and even water molecules. As a result, they suffer from very high path losses. These losses become much more limiting, especially when the transmission range is higher than one meter. Also, the noise sources affecting the terahertz signals is different from classical microwave electromagnetic signals. The molecular absorption noise is shown to be exhibiting a non-white noise and another important noise type, the receiver noise, are shown to be very high in this frequency range. As can be seen in this graph, the path loss rates become too high, especially for higher frequencies of the terahertz band. It is bearable in the 1 cm range and mostly ok in the 1 dm range. But starting from 1 meter, there are some frequencies where it is practically impossible to have any type of meaningful communication. In this figure, we also see some areas, some windows between the long spikes, which can be used for transmission purposes. This is different from the microwaves and can be considered to be another notable difference of the terahertz waves. These zones are called the transmission windows for higher terahertz frequencies. Now, Regarding the terahertz waves, the major problem becomes how are we going to generate signals in this frequency range efficiently? Enter graphene, a one atom thick sheet of carbon. It's a very new material, first produced in lab environments in 2003, which has unique properties. Unlike any other material, 
graphene sheets act like they are two-dimensional objects, which are quite a unique case. They are very small in size and suitable for very high levels of miniaturization. They are very lightweight, yet they are one of the strongest materials known so far. Also, they have a very high heat and electricity conductibility. Where can we use this graphene then? There are numerous areas where we can use this material. Solar panels and energy storage through battery designs. Lightweight and durable composite materials. Flexible display touch panels that can be bended and warped. Heating systems. Chemical sensors that can detect chemical agents. Higher quality inks. And lastly, semiconductors for designing smaller and faster transistors. Regarding applicability for semiconductors and electronic circuit design, is it that suitable? Well, not exactly. As a material, graphene ex lacks something called the band gap, a range of energy in which various states of the electron flow can exist. These states range from no flow to full flow. Having a big band gap is typical of an insulating material, which means no electron flow. A medium band gap suggests a semiconductor, where depending on conditions, there may be more or less electron flow, like an on-off switching capability. No band gap is typical of a conductive material, which of course applies to graphene. Without a band gap, the essential property of semiconductors, there is no easy way to control or modulate electron current. It is kind of a showstopper for a potentially huge material for electronics. There are ongoing research on conducting composite materials based on graphene that exhibits a medium band gap, like double layer graphene or carbon nanotubes. But as of now, they are still under development and require further research. When we come to antennas, the no band gap property is not an issue for antennas and antenna design in general. This is due to the fact that antennas do not have transistors. Therefore, they do not need to exhibit superconductor properties. It has been shown that graphene-based nano-size antennas, or graphennas to be short, can be designed and are able to generate terahertz signals efficiently. The unique properties of graphene allow graphennas to generate terahertz waves by something called the surface plasmon polarization waves, or SPP waves in short. An electromagnetic wave directed vertically onto a graphene surface excites the graphene into oscillations that interact with those in the dielectric on which the graphene is mounted, thereby forming these so-called SPP waves. When the antenna becomes resonant, the SPP EM coupling greatly increases and results in efficient energy transfer between these two waves. Also, with these SPP waves, graphennas that are two orders of magnitude smaller than their metallic antennas can generate terahertz waves. We had briefly talked on the wireless network on chip application on the introductory level. This is a very good application for graphennas and terahertz signaling in general. In a system on a chip solution with high number of cores, cores can communicate with each other via terahertz signaling using graphennas. Since they are very small in size, it is no problem to fit them next to each core with ease. This way, we have the cores able to communicate among themselves with extremely low propagation delays, high reconfigurability possibilities, and inherent broadcast and multicast capabilities. Since the terahertz band offers huge data rates, graphennas are small in size, and they require low energy to operate, such a wireless network on chip system is very scalable with increasing number of cores. A critical advantage of the wireless systems over wired ones is the inherent multicast and broadcast capabilities. These capabilities are of paramount importance for the wireless network on chip applications. For multicast, it is shown by Abadal et al. that the amount of ejected packets consistently increases due to the multiple replication of each multicast message within a wireless network on chip. 
this figure plus the percentage of ejected flits that are due to multicast transactions, which grows about 2% in the wireless network on chip system called MESI and almost reaches 50% in another wireless network on chip system called HT. This fact further encourages the employment of shared medium network on chips in general, if feasible, to efficiently serve multicast traffic. On the other hand, broadcasting is a vital part of on-chip traffic due to numerous issues like cache coherence, data consistency, and global resource management. To summarize, we can roughly itemize the features of the terahertz signaling system as follows. On the good side, due to the inherent potential of the terahertz band, the terahertz signaling offers a very high channel bandwidth and consequently offers very high data rates. Albeit its the differences, it is similar to the classical electromagnetic wave-based wireless communication, which means it is much easier to use the 20 plus years of experience from the wireless communication research in terahertz signaling. On the downside though, the terahertz waves have very limited ranges. The current research shows that they cannot be practically used for applications for more than one meter ranges. Even for lower ranges, it has very high fat loss components, which severely reduces the quality of the communication unless special care is taken. Lastly, the terahertz signaling seems to have limited biocompatibility. The key material, the graphene, is suggested to be harmful to living tissues due to its chemical structure. Also, since animal tissues have considerably high volumes of water inside them, and it is known that terahertz waves have a hard time penetrating water molecules, as a result, their applicability in this environment is limited to say the least. We have given a general look on the terahertz signaling in the context of nanonetworking and molecular communications research in this video. We will be continuing with the microscopic theory of diffusion, which forms a basis of the communication wire diffusion system in the fourth video of the basic level. Here you can see the reference of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.